It's Lonnie the Theater Lady, Pittsburgh's own. Hi, Brian. Theater celebrity. How are you doing? I'm happy to be here. Loving the leopard print. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I noticed that one finger was a little more prominent. We, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? <laughs> I am delighted to be able to talk about the old man and the sea. Yes, a good old <coughs> classic <coughs> tale. Yeah. Yes, based on the Ernest Hemingway novel from 1952, which I think this is pretty amazing. Not only won a Pulitzer Prize, but a Nobel Prize. All right, so yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I, it's a pretty we, good we story. We were all forced to read it in high school, but I, I don't we remember were. much about those days. Can you remind me a little bit about what happens in this? I assume it involves the sea. And, and an a, old man. And a man of advanced years. <laughs> yes. So uh, please uh, uh, elaborate. It's the story of a Cuban fisherman, Santiago, uh, who has come across some bad luck. And hasn't caught a fish, excuse me, for going on 85 days. Yeah. And he's worried about his luck. He um, goes out to sea, and I won't spoil it, but he gets a fish. This <laughs> is a rollicking good time. Well, you know, it's, it's <laughs> reading the book, which we all had to do, as you said, yeah. I found kind of boring, but... I was a kid. I think we were all forced to read that book when we were way too young to really appreciate all the nuances and everything. That I was feel going the on same the about characters. Shakespeare too. I think yes. when they force it on you when in you're not ready. high school, it's like, oh, your brain just shuts off. And you don't want to have anything to do with it, you know. And I know people are going to like be astounded when I say this, but this was actually an exciting production. Now, why would they be astounded? Because if you read the book, oh, okay. It's, feels a little like a snooze mm. if you read it as a kid but there was a lot of excitement um anthony crivello plays the old man and his list of accomplishments and his bio uh, is a mile long theater a stage screen television he was actually the phantom in the Phantom of the Opera in Las Vegas, among many other astounding accomplishments. And I can see why he was wonderful. Yeah, in Vegas, really, uh, really the mask is sequins. That's... <laughs> probably. <laughs> I didn't I see know. it there. No, but I don't I'm know. Imagining. That's, that's probably totally not true. But... <laughs> probably is. But I, it was such a coup, I think, to have him here doing that role. One of the most amazing parts of this for me was the video projection it was huge along two back walls and coupled with the sound of the waves and when when you were in a place where the sea was calm it was a quiet little whisper of the waves and then when it was a more uh, powerful sea you heard the and it was so you were transported convincing. you were and yeah. and on the floor there was also a projection of the sea and i happened to be lucky enough to sit in the front row and sometimes I kind of forgot that I wasn't on the beach or on the ocean. It was amazing. And the birds flying by with the sound with the birds chirping. And I'm going to see if I could do ocean. something like that for my living room. You know, they'd be great oh, for parties. It'd be wonderful. And it was so impactful and, and so real. And with the boat was out on the sea and when he was battling with a fish that he was catching the lighting on the sea when they talked about the sea turning red the lighting turned red it was just hmm. technically it was really really a coup and it wasn't like disco lights and flashing and although that would have neon. added a certain cachet to this uh, Hemingway classic. No, it made it feel so authentic and so real. <laughs> yeah. and, and, cool. and the adaptation, this I thought was amazing, was written by A.E. Hotchner, who happens to be 100 years old, and a very good friend of Hemingway. They have, wow. They've been together, you know, they ran the bulls in Pam with the bulls in Pamplona. They fished together off the coast of Cuba, which is where this story is set. That is a good friend. I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah, and he's... He I think did it if with you his son. if you run the bulls together, like you're connected for life. That's yeah. that's like the ultimate buddy thing to do. Let's put that on our list. 
Okay, you we'll know, do it. Let's run the bulls together. I'm going to wear Florida. roller skates, I, though. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to roll Oh, my God, that'd be even more hysterical. <laughs> I think let's let's roller skate from the roll bulls the of Pamela. Because <laughs> after you go through something like that with somebody, you are, like, bonded for life. That's for sure. That's going to be, like, our, our Berg Vivant retreat. Okay. Do you think everyone would be down for that? Hey, we're going to go to Pamplona. We're just we're going to go jogging. Let's just say that. We're we won't tell the truth. We're just going to go jogging. Oh, man. I would not leave you behind, though. Okay. Thank you. That's good to know. Yeah. I, I just, might leave you behind. I would just make sure you're wearing red and like they can go out. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you Thank you. Thank you so much. But, and then I'll but, write a play about it. <laughs> oh, gosh. When you're 101. Oh, yeah, well, like, yeah, it's not but too far off. I yeah. just thought it was wonderful that this man, who was a dear friend of his, wrote this adaptation cool. along with his son, yeah. Tim. Now, this was... With with Hemingway's son or this guy's own no, son? No. Okay. Tim Hotchner, okay, A.E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hotchner's son. Gotcha. They did this together. Um, and another thing that was really wonderful about this was how they, uh, the uh, adaptation approached it because actually... Hemingway was a character in this play. He, so sometimes he was narrating. That was David Cabot. And he kind of looked Hemingway-ish. I, I like the casting on that. And sometimes he was narrating. And sometimes he was actually typing on a typewriter the, the play as it was unfolding in, in front of our eyes. Mm. Um, it, it Very well acted by everybody. And the young man... Uh, Manolin was Gabriel Florentino, and he had a wonderful friendship with the old man, and I, I loved their uh, chemistry together and how much they cared about each other. and it, it was lovely. And here's the really cool part that you would never expect. There was a cellist on the stage the entire play that was Simon J.C. Cummings. He's a part of Cello Fury, the oh, group yeah. in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And his music, it was all original and it created the mood. It sometimes was exciting and made you feel like you were on the edge of your seat. Sometimes it was kind of maudlin and made you really sad or worried. It was just such an it was almost like another character. At one mm. point, the cello was a bird. I, I can't even explain this, but I will say that I always thought this was kind of a boring book. So I thought, well, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll go. <laughs> and it was exciting. And was it's cool. kind of historic because it's the inaugural professional performance oh. at the new Pittsburgh Playhouse. This was their first, so that's kind of historic. And I guess... Ron Lindblom, you just mentioned earlier, is leaving the Playhouse. Yes, uh, I did see that in the news so recently. So I guess this was his last hurrah, too. And or, a, or one of, yeah. Yeah, what a wonderful uh, goodbye to him to produce something so exciting and unique and original and creative. Um, even if you don't like the book, you will love this show for all the... Uh, originality and technical reality and sometimes there's even some immersive an immersive scene that happens you get your feet wet <laughs> that would be funny <laughs> really no. immersed in the water but I tell I don't you what but it's that. probably the most uh, economical economical beach vacation you can get in Pittsburgh in the dead of winter that is ex huh? absolutely right How's that? I was even warm <laughs> oh and the the um Sky changing at night, and, you know, the moon and the storm. It's a clouds. virtual vacation, yeah. Yeah. It felt a little bit like a virtual reality experience. Huh? Not quite that immersive, but yeah. I highly recommend it. Highly, highly.